All right, welcome back to That's Some Cheese, part of the Vendetta Sports Podcast Network. Today is Thursday, August 6th. We have a Champions League episode today featuring Serenity and Paul. We are going to be breaking down the, I guess it's quarterfinal brackets, because half the brackets have already... Round of 16, basically. Yeah, you're right. Round of 16, there we go. (laughs) Because... uh. PSG, Atalanta, Atletico Madrid, and Leipzig have already advanced. So we will preview the other matchups here. Serenity, Paul, any opening thoughts here? Uh, I would like to just pose a question of what you think is the most exciting game that's going to be happening. The one you are most looking forward to watching. Well, in my bracket, I picked Juventus and Real Madrid to complete comebacks. So uh, I'm just hoping for the comebacks because I'm sure nobody else picked that. I think, yeah, the Real Madrid-Man City game is the most exciting one for sure, I think. I think Real are the most likely to come back. I don't want them to, but <laughs> I, I chose Man City, but I have, I'm not losing <laughs> any doubt for Real Madrid to win it, honestly. All right, so uh, I guess the first thing to do here is we'll go over Juventus and Lyonne. Right now, somehow Lyonne has a 1-0 advantage. I guess I'll pose this question. Give me 1-10. to 10. What's the chance that Juventus can make the comeback here? Serenity, what do you got? I, I, I chose Juventus. I think they're going to be able to pull it off. Like, I know that Leon, like, they're, they're up one, but they also – they're going to be away for this returning game. So, if they score, then they've got a higher chance of moving on. But I think Juventus is going to pull their shit together. <laughs> what do you got, Paul? Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd agree with that. I mean, the thing is, though, lately, Juventus, their form has not been great. So, if you don't – Asked that like maybe two, three weeks ago, I'd have like Juventus for sure. But I don't know. Leon just played PSG in the final of the Coupe de Ligue and they drew nil nil, and that's all they have to do to get through against Juventus. So I have gone for Juventus, but I wouldn't be shocked if Leon won. All right, let's go to the uh the second one there because Man City also has an advantage, so I'll pose this question. One to ten. Real Madrid is able to make a comeback in this one. Paul, we'll start with you there. I'll say five, and that's purely because Man City, basically, they have two sides. They're like Jacqueline and Hyde. If they turn up, then I think City will go through. But they've had some really bad results lately, like losing to teams they shouldn't have, like Southampton. So if that City turns up, Real are going through. But mm, it's hard to call. It is hard to call. I I don't know. If you if you're looking at Real Madrid and who's gonna be able to play, right? Their defense is almost shot. I'm not saying that their other defenders are like bad, but Ramos is suspended. So I and he was what one of their leading scorers this season, yeah. right? Or one of, yeah. So he's shot, he's suspended, he's not gonna be there. And Marcelo is out possibly on muscle injury. And, I mean, I love watching him play. I think that he's a great defender, but also he knows how to play offensively. So I think that City should be able to score some goals, especially because they've got De Bruyne. So I would – I chose Man City, but I'm not – like, again, earlier, I'm not counting Real Madrid to be completely out of the competition. The next little matchup here, Bayern already has a 3 nothing lead. So I'll pose this to Serenity because I know you're a Chelsea fan. Uh, do you have any glimmer of hope here? No. Okay. No, not at all. <laughs> I mean, Pulisic already got injured in FA Cup final. Uh, I've said this before. I tweeted it out that I would go and fix Chelsea's defense for free because, God, they need help. It is ridiculous. So I'm – I don't think that Chelsea is going to have a great defense about, against Bayern, which is that's definitely something that they need. But Pulisic is out, 
and he's been great on offense. Uh, I, I don't know. William has been very iffy this season, so I don't know if they're going to be able to even score. I think Chelsea could probably pull off one goal, but Byron for sure is going through. Yeah, uh, no need to spend a ton of time there. Uh, Barcelona, Napoli, I guess I picked all upsets here because I picked Napoli. The reason why is it feels like Barcelona, I don't know, maybe they just aren't going to take them seriously. I know Napoli's down in the standings, but like last time there was no reason why it should have been a draw. <laughs> and Barcelona has had bad defense all year. So I feel like Insigne can get one little run going and maybe that's enough. We'll start with Paul here. What do you have for Barcelona and Napoli? Yeah, I, I, I'm with you. I think I think Napoli could do it. And part of my reasoning as well is that it's really obvious that the Barca players don't want Setien in charge anymore. And Messi's come out and said that he'd like another manager, he'd like Marcelo Bielsa to manage. So really, this could be their chance. If they, I'm not saying they're going to throw the game, but if they lose, then there's a good chance that the manager's going to get sacked. So they can have their way. But basically, if Messi wants to win, he'll win. If he doesn't want to win, they'll lose. That's what I think. Go ahead, Serenity. Yeah, I've been really upset with Barca's defense because they're also my other team. So both my teams are stuck on defense this year. Great. Um, I I think that PK... <laughs> I shouldn't say that he's the problem because he's still a good player, but he's pushing up so high. And you can just watch this season. Literally, there are so many goals that the other teams got just because, you know, PK was playing high or the defense was playing high. And Barca's team is not the youngest team anymore. So they're having trouble getting back. Um, I still chose Barca to go through but, again, wouldn't necessarily be surprised if Napoli could pull it off. Paul? Yeah, I adding to that as well is a lot of the, the Barcelona players, the, the club has come out and openly transfer listed them. I mean, if I was a player and I knew the club wanted to sell me, like, I mean, it could go either two ways. They could want to play well so they get a good move to another club, or they just think, like, what's the point? Like, I'm not going to be here for much longer. So I don't know. I, it is Barcelona at the end of the day, and they do have the best player in the world. So I don't know. It's going to be a good good game to watch. I mean, Napoli are a decent side as well. So they'll be organized and they'll be passionate. So, yeah, I don't know. So I think the yeah, best I'm... thing to do was we have the article on vendettasportsmedia.com. I'll link it in the description, all of our Champions League picks. So I guess I'll go around and uh, each person can explain maybe their finals matchup and who they picked as the winner. So let's go to Paul here. You have Bayern and Atletico Madrid with Bayern winning. Let's hear your explanation for why you picked that. So I I have a massive soft soft spot for Atalanta, the Italian team. I think that would be uh, PSG, which is quite an unusual thing to say but I just think they'll do it and then Atletico playing RB Leipzig Atletico are just organized as hell like Diego Simeone is just a very defensive coach and I think against Leipzig they won't struggle I think they'll get through quite easily and then they're already in the semi-final and they'll be playing Atalanta or PSG and I'd back Atletico against either of them so I think they'll get through to the final quite comfortably actually I think they'll they'll defend their way to the final like they have done in the past. And then with Bayern, I mean, I I was reading up before this and they've won 17 games in a row, which is insane for like any side. And I just think the way they were playing when the Bundesliga started back up again was incredible. They got Robert Lewandowski, who's just been scoring goals for fun. I think if the Ballon d'Or was happening this year, he, he probably would have won it. So yeah, I think Bayern will... It will be basically attack versus defense in the final, but Bayern are just too strong. I, I can't see anyone beating Bayern, if I'm honest. Serenity? Uh, yeah, I'm sitting right there with them. I mean, I chose Bayern and PSG to be in the final. 
I, Bayern's just been so good this year. It's really hard to think that they at least wouldn't get to the final. Um, and I chose Bayern over PSG just, I mean, besides them being super good this year, but I mean, PSG, they had, they've had a couple games, but they didn't get to return to their regular league because they can't go back until September. It could work to their advantage because they wouldn't be maybe as tired as, you know, all these other teams, but it just means that they haven't been practicing and getting in all the work this season. So I definitely think, yeah, I'm right there with Paul. I'm thinking Bayern's going to win it all. Another thing that goes against PSG as well is Mbappe being injured. Because, I mean, he's he's unreal. I mean, they've still got Neymar, Icardi, Di Maria, but Mbappe is going to be a miss for any side. Yeah, I went with PSG to win it. Correct me if I sound like an idiot here, but I just feel like if they can squeak by Atalanta and for some reason I'm nervous about it, I just feel like Mbappe can go on one of those runs where he just wins by himself. And Lewandowski has just been too good for them not to be in the final. So that's why I went with that. I'm I'm really interested to see who wins our pool. <laughs> because some people have chosen some really odd uh, teams to go to. If, if I could redo it, I'd, I think I'd actually put Leon going through ahead of Juventus, but I'll stick by it. I'll stick by it. I thought it was super funny because there were some, I mean, there were seven of us and some of them, we all, we could all choose the same picks on the bra- on one side of the bracket, but the other side would be like completely different. So we all have different picks. And I think Paul and I are the only ones that choose Byron to win. Ooh. I think. Yeah. Cause oh. everybody's choosing either like Juventus or PSG. I want, to thank, uh, I want to thank Jordan for picking Chelsea over Bayern. That was a that was <laughs> optimistic. <laughs> that is optimistic. Uh, do we have any closing thoughts here? I guess we can do another quick little episode maybe after the uh, quarterfinals are over. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Uh, Paul, Serenity, anything else to add here? Uh. <laughs> Okay. No? Wait, sorry. It just froze. I'm back now. I'm back. Oh. Do you guys have anything else to add? Um, I think not having fans is going to help some teams as well. Whereas, is that the biggest advantage there? I mean, Man City have been used to this is going to sound like a dig at Man City because in England, a lot of people take the mick out of them for having nearly an empty stadium like most weeks, considering how good they are. But because the Premier League has been back for a while and they've played in front of no fans, I don't think it will affect them. But then the, Euro- the like mainland European teams like Atletico Madrid, Real Madrid, Napoli, they rely on European nights. Their fans are incredible. The atmosphere is so good. So I think maybe they're going to, not struggle, but it will be harder for them to get pumped for the game, which sounds ridiculous because they're playing the Champions League. But yeah, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see who can adapt and who doesn't. I think that'll that'll have a say for sure. Serenity, it's definitely going to be add? different this year. I mean, it's going to be different this year because it's no longer two legs, so it's not like you know teams can have a second chance to come back and win it. So it's, that's definitely going to change, but also. I mean, neutral venues, right? Because, that, I mean, there's, we've already proven that there is real, no real home advantage this year because the fans are absent, but it's going to be so different. So we may end up actually seeing surprises that I don't think we would see otherwise. All right, we'll make sure to do this again. Again, uh, check out the website, vendettasportsmedia.com. Follow Serenity S. Leesman on Twitter. Paul, what is your Twitter handle? Uh, it's Tragana Sport. So T-R-E-G-U-N-N-A Sport. Make sure to follow Paul. <laughs> I'll have that remembered for next time. Uh, VendettaSportsMedia.com. Thank you guys for watching, and we will see you next time.